So there seems to be some confusion about the role fructose 2,6-bisphosphate plays. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is an important allosteric regulator of the substrate cycle. So importantly, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, or F2,6-BP, is going to activate our phosphofructose kinase 1. So this is our activity here. So whenever we have high levels of it, that's in red, it's going to allow this enzyme to work more efficiently. And again, on the bottom here, we just have our substrate, so what this enzyme is working on. If we don't have F26BP, then, oh look, our PFK isn't working very well. And so another way to put this is that if F26BP is present, then we're going to go through glycolysis, right? So this is an important enzyme of glycolysis. Um, and then on the very next slide, well, what happens if we don't have F26BP, right? So if our levels are low of F26BP, oh look, it's going to activate gluconeogenesis, right? So this is our FBPase activity or our fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase activity, right? So those two enzymes, that's one of our irreversible steps, um, that's going to be our, rec our reciprocally regulated step. So this is an important allosteric regulator of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. So hopefully that clears up the role of those two. The question then always becomes, so again, if we look here, this is going to activate PFK1, go through glycolysis. It's going to stop this, um, and so we're not going to be able to go through gluconeogenesis, right, if this is high. But if this is low, well then it's no longer going to inhibit this, and so then it's going to activate gluconeogenesis. So again, hopefully that clears it up a little bit of the role F26BP plays. The question always becomes is, how is F26BP actually made? Well, what's interesting is that we are going to use utilize two isos, isozymes here. So isozymes, remember, are enzymes that function on the same substrate but have different um, products. And so PFK1 is the one that we actually use in glycolysis, and FBPase one is what we use in gluconeogenesis. But to make this um, allosteric regulator, or fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, we're going to use two different enzymes. So it's called PFK2 and FBPase2. So these particular isozymes are going to catalyze this reaction that's going to allow us to convert from fructose 6-phosphate into this important allosteric regulator. And so when we have this, of course, the kinase is going to utilize ATP, right? And a phosphatase is going to remove that inorganic phosphate. What's really cool about this particular, about these two enzymes, is that they're actually contained on the same polypeptide chain. So again, this is one giant subunit, but it has that PFK or the kinase activity and the phosphatase activity both on the same polypeptide chain. So we talked about this in class once already, but I just wanted to go over it again. So in other words, when the kinase is active, right, it's going to allow us to um, utilize that activity. Or if the phosphatase is active, it's going to utilize that activity. So really, let's tie this in big picture as we go through it. So when blood glucose concentration is low, we're going to stimulate glucagon, right? So glucagon is the uh, opposite hormone of insulin. So it's going to stimulate the production of something called cyclin or camp cyclin um, dependent protein kinase. So, uh, and this is going to phos phosphorylate the protein. So now you can see that we've added this inorganic phosphate onto our protein. What that allows us to do is now our phosphatase activity is active. And this, in turn, this phosphatase activity, if we go back one slide, well, what does the phosphatase activity do? It's going to make fructose 2,6-bisphosphate inactive, right? Because this is active, so we're going to get lots of this. Hopefully that makes sense as we go through. Um, okay. So if this is active and we now have this, what's going to happen to our levels of our fructose 2,6-bisphosphate? We're going to drop them. So if we have low levels of this, that's going to then stimulate gluconeogenesis. Okay. So do you understand how this is occurring over here? So now let's look kind of at the opposite. So when blood glucose concentration is high, oh, insulin's released. So when this happens, um, this kinase is no longer active, and instead we're going to have this phosphoprotein phosphatase active. Well, what does a phosphatase do? Oh, it removes an inorganic phosphate. Look, our phosphatase activity up here is now inactive, but our PFK2 is active. 
And I want to go back to the previous slide again, PFK, PFK2, that isozyme, what's it going to do? Ah, it's going to make fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. All right, so now this is active, so now it's going to make fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, right here. That's going to stimulate glycolysis, and it's going to inhibit gluconeogenesis. So I'm hoping that this then pulls that entire process together. So there's only one other component um, 